Hi all. In today's video, I'm going to show you the top 10 fixes for speeding up Yosemite and adding back some missing features that you've lost uh, in the new operating system but are kind of still there. They're just not on the surface. So we're going to start off with step one to free up some disk space. A lot of reasons why your computer may be running slow is that you simply have a filled up hard drive. So the best thing to do is make sure that your hard drive is not filled up to capacity and if it is, just go and delete some files. One of the things that kind of drove me a little crazy, I think even in Maverick, was that they took away the ability to see how uh, full your hard drive was right here at the bottom of the window. The way to get it back is you go to the view menu and you click on show status bar and as you can see I can now see how much disk space is available um, which I did not, was not able to see before right here at the bottom. So that's kind of cool and if we uh, zoom in you can see that that's actually the hard drive space that's available. Okay and uh, let me zoom back out and let's go for another. Another thing that's actually pretty cool is um, I used to like the eject button over here and as you can see there's no eject button here. If you control click on the menu bar um, you can go to customize toolbar and you can look for the eject button and put it back in here and if you like to burn CDs and you like having that button there you can put that there. But one of my favorite uh, icons over here is the Pathfinder and I'll show you what that does. Uh, if you click on any file in your window and you click on the Pathfinder, it tells you exactly what folders it, it's in and exactly what the file path is. So it's in my MacBook Air, it's in Yosemite folder, library folder, audio, Apple Loops, Apple. And that's where these files exist. So it's great if you're looking for where this thing is on your computer. It works out quite nicely. Also, if you're wondering how I was able to get the names under each of these, if yours aren't showing them, if you go control click and normally it's defaulted to icons only so if you control click and go icons and text you actually can see what the name of each of these icons are so that's going to be a helpful tool if uh, you're not familiar with what each of these icons mean so that uh, is my first step so the second step get rid of transparency the way you do that is you go to your system preferences click on accessibility if you just type it it's so much easier to find there it is. And then uh, next step would be you click on display and click on reduce transparency. This actually, I've been told, is really slowing down a lot of people's computers. So just clicking on this can really help you. All right. So that's number two. Next one. Where's the iTunes sidebar? That drove me kind of crazy. Uh, let me open up iTunes here. Where have we got it? They also change the icon color. It's red in case uh, you didn't know. If you click on um, over here, you have movies, TV shows, podcasts, iTunes, audiobooks. What you're looking for is the playlist. Um, hopefully you have that showing. Movies, music. Here's music. There we go. And here's playlist. Okay. When you click on playlist, you get back uh, that sidebar, and at least you're able to see uh, some of the things you were before. So, again, all I did was click on the music and then click the playlist, okay? So that brings back some of the iTunes features. Also, keep in mind, iTunes icon is red now, which it was uh, blue before, so that kind of uh, messed me up for a while. All right, let's go to the next one. I think uh, that was step three, so here's step four. So where's my full URL address? You know, I used to be able to see the whole web address, now I can't. So let's go into Safari, and here we are in Safari. We're going to go to Safari, we're going to go to Preferences. And from Preferences, what we're going to do is we're going to click on, here, let me move that down, Advanced, and Show Full Web Address right there. You want to have that clicked so that when you're typing your URLs in here, you actually see the whole web address as you can see. Alright, so that's another one. Again, you go to System Preferences and click on Advanced and then turn on Show Full Web Address. So that brings back that feature. Uh, step 5, Change Spotlight Settings. So Spotlight is um, a lot of the searches that you see here for the Spotlight search um, has been very advanced in Yosemite, but having everything on kind of slows down the computer so if you go to System Preferences and type in Spotlight, there we go, 
And again, you can select it or just like that. I would leave on 1 through 5, and I think I would even leave on 6. I would turn off uh, some of these other ones, like do I really need it to search my mail and messages, all my PDF documents? Um, do I want it to be a calculator? Spotlight can act as a calculator. I don't know if any of you saw that. If you do 2 plus 2, you're going to get 4. I don't know if you saw that uh, happen, so I'll do it again for you here. You see it says equal 4. So um, that's kind of interesting. Um, it acts as a calculator. If you don't need a calculator, you can turn it off. Uh, if you don't need Spotlight suggestions, you can turn it off. Um, I may not want it to go through every spreadsheet and every document every time it's doing a search. So really, you have to look at um, what you may not want it to you know, look at. See what's important to you and see what's not. And if you feel that something doesn't need to be on, turn it off. Because if you have all of these items on, it could be a problem. Also, you can click and drag things in whatever order that you want. So. Um, by putting them in that particular order that you feel you want it to search, uh, that will also reduce uh, some of the speed, will actually increase some of the speed of a lot of the spotlight searches. So turn on and off, try different things. There's no real formula. You can always turn them back on and see what you really need to have on to speed up your computer. So that's another one. Uh, another one that you can do, and this one is FileVault. What's really bad about this is that you kind of want file vault if your computer gets stolen. Um, you definitely don't want anybody to go into the computer and grab any of your information or data. So you kind of really want file vault on if you're, you have a laptop and you're concerned about theft. But it does slow down your computer and uh, you really need to turn it off if it's really causing a bad slowdown. Um, if you do, you go into security and privacy in your preferences as you just saw. And here is File Vault. Obviously, you have to click on this and put in your username and password. And then turn on File Vault is on. That means it's off. So in my case, it's off. But if it was on, you would turn it off over here. And then obviously close. So um, that's up to you if you want to do that. But if it's really causing a slowdown on your computer, you may want to turn it off. And only when you travel to turn it on. So that's up to you. Let's go to step seven. So I have videos on how to repair permissions and check for disk errors. You can watch that video, uh, but that is another thing that you can do. Um, it's really important to run repair disk permissions because sometimes when you upgrade operating systems, the permissions don't work very well because you might set up a new user account with a different name and it confuses some of the files. It's always good uh, to run uh, the disk utility repair permissions and fix any disk errors that are on there. So that's step seven. You can watch the video on that um, on my channel. So this is a really interesting one. Uh, reset system management. A lot of people don't know um, how to do this, but basically, um, and I'll open up my little keyboard here for you. Um, here we go. So what we can do is the shift, option, control, and power buttons on your computers. So that's the shift, um, the option, and the controller down here. If you hold them down for 10 seconds, um, when it restarts, when you start up the computer, you're holding those keys down, um, it will reset uh, the system management controller. Uh, that actually helps if you're having power issues um, or if you're having, uh, you know, some weird things going on with uh, your charging and you don't know what to do. And this is things that you could try to actually help with the computer. It's one of the main fixes that uh, people do at the uh, Apple Store. Uh, because, you know, the average person doesn't know to even reset the system management controller. But I had a problem once where my computer completely died. I plugged it in, and I, nothing I did, I couldn't get it back up. Um, I put it down to the Apple Store, and they did this uh, fix with the shift option control power button. It reset it, and it came right back up. So I was kicking myself that I didn't know how to do this before I took my ride down to the store. So... Great, great little tip uh, for repairing computers if you have a power problem. Step nine is resetting the PRAM. I do this all the time. Um, whenever I, I rebuild a system, I will always restart the computer, hold down the command, which is here, the option, and P, meaning the actual P key, and the actual R key. Yes, you have to use a couple of fingers to hold them down, 
but you start up the computer and you quickly grab these keys, you hold down your fingers, you wait till you hear the chime restart, and you let it restart like three times. Um, I Some people only do it once. I like to do it three times. I find that three times is a charm. So it's up to you, but uh works beautifully. So that's resetting the PRAM. That gets rid of a lot of the random access memory issues that might be, uh, you know, kind of in your... You're in the memory of the computer, and this fixes a lot of things. So if you're having a slowdown, it's always good to do. Can't hurt. Doesn't delete anything, so there's no big deal in running it. Step nine: Make sure all your apps and extensions are up to date. Just go into the app store, you know, the the usual way you would do it for uh, your updates, and just make sure that when you go into your app store, and I could actually go in there and show you, um, there is a button here called updates. Um, after you update to Yosemite, you may actually have some additional updates that you need. Just uh, update them right from this window. Not a big deal. Very easy to do. You may have an app that's or an extension that's running uh, that may not be functioning properly in Yosemite, and there is an update for it. You just haven't updated your computer, so that's a good thing to do. Um, the last one, which is number 10, is if your computer is still not running fast after all this is going on and you're really not sure what's causing it. Go to the Go menu, go to Utilities, and open up an application called Activity Monitor. Now, I'm going to show you this a little up close. Here we go. Um, basically, these are the programs that are running, and if you take a look at the CPU, 83% um, over here of my CPU is being used, 79, it goes back and forth, uh, with Adobe Captivate which is the program I'm actually using to make this uh, video. And um, if that was something that didn't make any sense, uh, you know, this would be the perfect timing to actually click on it and click this button to force quit it, which would s tell me right away if my computer is going to be working faster. I often do this if I'm not quite sure what to do because um, if there's an application up there running that I don't even know what it is and it's taking up all my CPU, um, I would click that and uh, force quit it, and then if my computer was running fine, I would check Activity Monitor again when I restarted, and if that same application was up there, I'd want to get rid of it and find out where it is. So that's a little last tip for how to keep your computer up and running fast uh, in Yosemite. Uh, try out these fixes. Let me know if they work for you, and if you have any additional ones, um, leave comments. And if you like this channel, subscribe and like the video. Thanks so much for listening.